Good morning, everyone. It is Sunday morning at 930, and I want to welcome you to Messages from Jesus. Today, we're going to be talking about a very important subject on the subject of rest. So um, before we begin, I just wanted to thank you all again for joining me as we continue on in our journey as we look at these health messages from the Bible. And this morning, I'd like to start off with a little story. Maybe some of you remember this in 1996. Uh, Jessica Dubroff was seven years old, and um, if you remember, she was attempting to be the youngest student pilot to fly across the United States. That was in 1996, Jessica Dubroff. Um, Now, uh, with her was her father and her flying instructor. And in that first couple of days, um, it was very uneventful, but when the media fixated on the story, they started to very closely follow the attempt and they began to hound the instructor pilot uh, for midnight and early morning interviews. So they were on this guy like constantly. Um, the story was told that while he, this instructor pilot was talking with his wife on the phone from Wyoming, uh, the instructor told his wife how frustrated he was with all the media interruptions and how fatigued he had become as a result of all the lost sleep that he had. And um, he was really looking forward to being um, finished with this media zoo. Well, the next morning, while preparing for the flight, the instructor, with an extremely impeccable record for safety, uncharacteristically failed to get a weather briefing before the departure. And as a result, he flew directly into a storm and the plane crashed shortly after takeoff. No one survived. Well, interviews with the ground staff later revealed that this very experienced pilot had started the engine without removing the wheel chocks. And that's something that every pilot does before even cranking the engine. So his forgetfulness showed his extreme state of fatigue. And it was really a tragic story. And it's one that we can all relate to, right? It's one where we've been so tired at night that when we're driving, it's very difficult to even keep our car straight in the lines. And we all know how important uh, rest really is. Tired minds are much more like, you know, make we're more likely to make serious mistakes when we're tired. And we don't really need science to tell us that, but yet in most societies around the world today, a significant percentage of the population is sleep deprived according to many uh, scientific um, studies. Well, here in the United States, uh, did you know that fatigue is one of the 10 most common reasons that people actually visit physicians? Uh, Here's an example. Um, Just how discomforting Uh, to know what a driver of a car heading towards you in the opposite lane is is really tired and more likely to make a mistake, right? Um, It's very discomforting knowing that if this guy is tired, he's probably going to swerve possibly onto your side of the road. Um, Wouldn't happen if he were rested, right? Well, this morning I'm speaking on physical wellness because our physical bodies are important. And the Bible says that the human body was first created as something positive. Take a look at this text. Genesis chapter 1 verse 31 says, Then God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. So the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So here we see it was very good. And that assessment also included us in our flesh. And unlike any of the other creatures, we alone were made in the image of God. Now, I don't know exactly what that means, but one thing we can know for sure, it wasn't bad, right? Our physical bodies um, were and are not evil. Um, again, turning to a interesting quote uh, from an author over 150 years ago named Ellen White, she had this to mention um, out of 1 Corinthians 11 verse 7, and that is, created to be the image and glory of God, Adam and Eve had received endowments not unworthy of their high destiny, graceful and symmetrical in form, regular and beautiful in feature, their countenances glowing with the tint of health and the light of joy and hope. 
they bore in outward resemblance the likeness of their maker. Nor was this likeness manifest in the physical nature only. So here we see a physical likeness to God, but also it says there was even more, so maybe spiritual. We physically, according to the Bible, reflect our creator. We were created in his image. And um, it actually means that we should do our utmost to take care of ourselves. What do you think? Well, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16 has this to say, Do you not know that you are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. So, let's talk about rest. It's a crucial factor in the whole equation of health. And sure, you might not smoke, or you might not drink, or you might even be a vegetarian, but our bodies and minds need rest, and this rest can come in different forms. The first and most obvious need for rest is the kind that the pilot didn't get enough of in that sad plane crash story, and that is sleep. Now, people can debate um, whether the Bible um, talks about spiritual aspects of rest or physical, but the point is very clear. Our bodies are physical bodies, and um, if we don't take care of our bodies, we can have many uh, harmful negative impacts, and one of those things is rest. You know, scientific research is pretty unanimous. As human beings, we need sleep. But you really don't need to read tedious research papers such as uh, pyramidal discharge from somatosensory cortex and cortical of primary afferent during sleep or hear about such words as REM and EEG and alpha rhythms or uh, GABA or uh, hypopnea. Um, you don't need to study all that to know the obvious, okay? The obvious is without enough sleep and rest, we simply cannot function the way that we know we should be functioning at, right? So as we take a look at this concept of rest, um, and even despite years of study, um, it's amazing how little we know about sleep. I mean, sleep is still very much a mystery. My own brother, he's a neurologist with a um, fellowship. He's an expert in sleep. And um, when I talked to him about sleep, exactly what it is and what it does and why it impacts our bodies and minds the way it does, uh, these are all questions that my brother says still need a lot of answers. And he's an expert. He's been doing it for over um, um, close to three decades now. Um, but what he does say is that what is absolutely incontrovertible is that sleep is essential to your health and well-being. And um, while sleep doesn't guarantee that you won't get sick, uh, the lack of, of sleep, he mentions to me, is a guarantee that uh, you would get sick. So um, now, how much sleep is actually enough? And many um, physicians, like my brother and many scientists, say that about eight hours of sleep each night, um, so somewhere between seven and nine hours, is where you need to be in order um, for your body to do a, a good recovery. You know, Thomas Edison reportedly believed that sleep was a waste of time. And so he set out to invent the electric light bulb to extend daylight hours. And he reportedly slept four to five hours per night. Yet those who worked with him in his laboratory reported that he frequently took naps during the day. <laughs> Um, you know, students often will study most of the night when cramming for examinations. And we just uh, went through many um, um, graduations just this last week. And um, it brought me back to when I used to study in college and um, how much I suffered the consequences of seat, uh, sleep deprivation and how my, my grades were impacted because I tried to stay up all night to cram. Well, the way people choose to live and order their lives along with the hectic work schedules frequently results in increased inattention at work. I know I had this issue when um, I was down in Florida. Um, I wouldn't get much sleep. And when I would um, go into the office in the daytime, um, you know, my peak performance was definitely impacted. 
um, I, I was getting sick more often because uh, my body didn't have the ability to fight off infections. Um, and many experts today have shown that uh, a deprivation in sleep has caused things such as diabetes and increases in heart disease and obesity and high blood pressure. And really, that's just for starters. And yet it seems that something so basic, so important, so fundamental to us can at times be really hard to get, right? I mean, I know many of you out there know what I'm talking about. Sometimes the need to rest and relax appears to be the greatest when there seems to be no time for it. Uh, without rest and relaxation, all humans suffer mental impairments. Tired people become inefficient, slower, less safe, and make more mistakes. And there have been many attempts to increase productivity by extending the work week and daily working hours. Uh, we do that a lot here in the United States. But all these attempts have failed because we have a, a physiological need for rest every day as well as a day off each week. And actually, um, it's been shown that a restful annual vacation increases productivity. Well, in Ecclesiastes 5.12, it says that the sleep of a laboring man is sweet. Um, here, it, it definitely implies that when our brains are tired enough, we will go to sleep involuntarily. These short periods of rest are called microsleeps, and generally uh, they last from a fraction of a second to no more than a second or two. If we are idly sitting in a chair, this usually causes no problem. But just imagine if these microsleeps um, happen while we're operating complex machinery or when we're driving a car. Um, boy, that can have disastrous results, right? How many of you tried driving late at night when you're tired and you can barely keep your eyes open? And there are many factors of our increasingly chaotic 24-7 world of tempting and demanding activities that contribute to the growing problem of sleep deprivation. You know, we want to work more to make more money. We have to try to uh, maybe raise a family by having two jobs. And the rising number of choices that are available to us, such as playing computer games or watching television late into the evening. Some of the most intriguing shows occur after 10 o'clock at night. Um, some people have even been found to be sleeping, going to bed finally at 2 or 3 o'clock because they get fixated on series and they can't stop watching a series that has multiple episodes, right? Well, fascinating research has shown that when we are tired, the what they call the executive functions of our minds begin to suffer. Um, in other words, we become less effective at recognizing proper choices and less capable of deciding which of those choices are actually best. So we have an impairment in our ability to act appropriately on doing what we know we should do. And um, we, we have um, even scientists have even shown that um, people who get proper sleep are way more productive in the morning when they wake up earlier in the morning. Well, if you don't get sleep at night, then your creativity is reduced, uh, your efficiencies are reduced, and what would have taken you maybe 15 minutes to do is now taking you one to two hours to do. Okay, and how many of us have actually suffered from making a wrong choice, sometimes even a moral choice, when we are tired? Also, when we miss out on sleep, we accumulate what is known as, quote-unquote, sleep debt. And this is pretty much what it sounds like. As this debt accumulates, we become less productive. And research was conducted with four groups of people who all had the same demonstrated skill level in performing identical tasks through a 21-day period of activity. And the bottom line of that study showed um, what we would expect, and that is that productivity was significantly reduced as nightly sleep was shortened. And even today, current research found that moderate sleep debt in healthy volunteers altered their met uh, metabolic state to, to the point where it started to mimic glucose metabolism of diabetics. So after four hours of sleep for six nights, healthy young men experienced a 30% decrease in their body's ability to metabolize carbohydrates. And they began to experience significant higher levels of, of stress hormones such as cortisol. And they saw that there was a decrease in insulin. 
um, sensitivities. Um, this and other research is suggesting then that there may be a link between the growing epidemic of sleep deprivation and the epidemic of obesity. And it's interesting that sleep deprivation leads to decreased performance, similar to that which occurs when a person is under the influence of alcohol. In fact, studies have shown that 16 to 18 hours of wakefulness, that's really one long day. And I've had a lot of those kind of days. I know some of you have too, especially when we're doing board meetings at night, right? So if you have these 16 to 18 hours of um, wakefulness, in healthy adults, it can actually result in impairments comparable to the legal blood alcohol level of intoxication that's greater than 0.08%. A lot of people suffer from not getting enough sleep. And though some people do have uh, some sleep issues and they're serious sleep issues that need special attention by uh, physicians like my brother, um, there are a few simple rules that we can follow that could help most of us get the rest that we need uh, when we sleep. So let's take a look at some of those steps. Okay, first, we need to take sleep seriously. It's part of what it means to be human. And you can't ignore something as basic as sleep and not experience the negative consequences. Um, second, our bodies work on rhythms. Um, so what this means is that uh, we should try to get to bed at the same time every night and get up at the same time even on the weekends and obviously this can't always be done but the more it's done the better okay third it's funny that we're talking about rest and one of the third things that really helps us sleep is exercise i know when my kids can't sleep at night i have them um try to run around in circles to kind of tire them down you know exercise can be very helpful in getting you a good night's sleep because when you exercise your body's burning up energy and sleep is the best way to restore those depleted energies, and your body knows that. So it will um, give you a better rest. Fourth, it's, and here's, here's what's really interesting. It's truly best not to go to sleep on a full stomach. And I know it's so difficult for a lot of us because we're getting home late at night, around 7. Then we um, takes us an hour to prep, and already it's 8 o'clock, and then we're going to bed by 9, right? But if possible, it's best not to go to sleep on a full stomach. Um, the reason is, is if you eat a heavy meal at night, uh, your body is trying to burn that energy or store it. Um, so what experts have said is do your best to to not hit the the snack or, or um, um, snacks at night. Try try to um, have at least a two hour period of time um, before you go to bed um, because it, it will give your body time to digest the food and not interfere with the body trying to rest. Okay, fifth. Uh, though caffeinated drinks are not optimal for health in any situation, uh, the more you drink, especially later in the day, the more your sleep will be disturbed. So if you have any kind of sleep issues, try to stay away from caffeinated drinks altogether. But if you are going to drink caffeinated drinks, make sure you do it um, at, at your lunchtime hour. All right, six. Though, of course, life is full of stresses and strains as much as possible, Seek to put all of these stressors behind you um, as you get ready for bed. Um, how much better to claim God's promises about trusting and resting in Him. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Fret not thyself because of Him who prospereth in His way, because of the man who bringeth wickedness devices to pass. So remember, tonight's sleep builds tomorrow's energy. Now, sleep isn't the only rest factor. You know, in many parts of the world, people have built shelters, right? Whether under private homes or in public places. And these shelters are there to give people refuge from storms, often um, from things such as tornadoes. My, my wife's family um, lives in Oklahoma. And um, they recently had tornadoes whipping through there and they had to um, try to get into shelters. Well, many of us can remember the days of even the Cold War between the East and the West. And they created, uh, the country had all these bomb shelters that were built in order to give us safety and refuge from what we feared would escalate into a massive nuclear war. So whether you're fleeing a storm or a nuclear bomb, no shelter comes to you, right? You actually have to go to it. But God created a shelter that comes to us. 
At 1,000 miles per hour, the speed of the Earth's rotation, the Sabbath circles the globe, arriving on one sundown and leaving on the next. Yep, that's the seventh-day Sabbath that brings to our homes and lives a refuge, a shelter from the demands that are upon us and our time. And even more amazing, we are commanded to rest. And that is right up there with the commandments against killing, stealing, and adultery. It's the commandment to take a break and rest with your family and rest in God. And if that doesn't tell us how important rest is for our general well-being, well, what would, right? The Sabbath is a real-time manifestation of the rest that Christ offers to us. Here in Matthew eleven twenty-eight, he says, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you, what does it say there? Rest. Anyone can say that he or she is resting in Christ, and anyone can say that he or she is saved by grace. But the keeping of the seventh-day Sabbath is a visible expression of that rest, a living parable, really, of what it means to be covered by His grace. And it really stands as a symbol of our rest in the completed work of Jesus for us. For He that is entered into His rest, He also hath ceased from His own works, as God did from His. Hebrews 4.10 so here we see that our obedience to this commandment is a way of saying, hey, we're so sure of our salvation in Jesus. We're so firm and secure in what Christ has done for me that we can rest from any of our works because we know what Christ has accomplished for me through his death and through his resurrection. And because of that, I'm going to rest in Christ. So the Sabbath is really about rest. In, in the Jewish or the Hebrew, we say Shabbat. It takes the rest factor to a whole new level, a commandment of God even. So why the name itself um, in, in Hebrew, Shabbat? Well, did you know that the, the actual definition of the word Shabbat or Sabbath actually means to rest, to cease, okay? Well, sleep doctors recognize that um, to truly remain rested and productive, we need both a weekly and annual rest. You know, for example, um, I, I love history, and in Britain during World War I, increased productivity was attempted by continuous nonstop work schedules. Okay, it was later recognized, however, that by reducing the work week to 48 hours and requiring one day of rest per week, Productiv productivity actually increased by 15%. Can you imagine um, reducing the work week to just 48 hours? Um, I think we have a lot to learn here in the United States. Well, on July 29, 1941, um, even Winston Churchill announced before the House of Commons, if we are to win this war, it will be by staying power. Okay, so consistency and strength and staying power. For this reason, we must have one holiday per week, okay, and one week holiday per year. And did you know that that was actually voted into law? <laughs> okay. Now, as humans, we all have our limitations, right? We can't work around the clock or without regular times of rest and um, and still be able to maintain a healthy, happy, and productive life. You know, we actually need daily rest as much as we actually need weekly and annual breaks to provide that, um, you know, a mental and emotional recuperation that's really necessary for our creativity and positive family relationships. I, um, I notice when I don't get rest, I just try to sequester myself because when I'm tired, I normally um, might say things I don't mean or I might have more emotional uh, driven content in my in my um, words. So um, to keep positive family relationships and you're tired, it's often best just to um, sequester yourself, pray, meditate, try to get some naps and try to get back on schedule. Um well, regular daily sleep and weekly rest actually empower us to be receptive to more than just physical, mental, emotional, and social, but also um, to help us be optimal 
in receiving the blessings of God. And no doubt as human beings, we were created to work. I mean, Adam and Eve before the fall were to dress and to keep the Garden of Eden. So we were intended to work, but at the same time, we were created not only to work, but to rest as well. And between the rest of the Sabbath and the rest of sleep, we are on the high path and the right path toward optimal physical, spiritual, and mental well-being. All right. Well, I want to thank everyone for joining me this morning. As you can tell, I may not have gotten enough sleep because I look like I'm tired, but I'm really okay. It's my allergies. Um, But I want to um, just encourage everyone to just find balance as um, you proceed forward in your day-to-day walk um, at work and at home and try to get that rest that you, you, um, your body needs to recover. And you'll discover that you'll have an easier time losing weight. Um, you'll be a lot healthier. You'll be mentally, emotionally, and physically um, more in stasis. So um, uh, try to get out there, um, work hard, but play hard and rest good, all right? Until the next time I see you, I do have another broadcast at 11 o'clock. I just want to say God bless to everyone, and thank you again for joining this morning, and um, get some rest. Talk to you later. Bye.